So, uh, last time we had talked about matrix multiplication. So, uh, just as a couple of examples to kind of jog our memory. Say we have the following two matrices that are being multiplied together. So we have A, which is a 2 by 3, multiplied to B, which is a 3 by 5. Can I multiply these two matrices together? Yes, why? What do we have to look at to tell whether we can multiply these together or not? Yeah, the columns of A and the rows of B. Because those are both the same, we can multiply them together. I'm going to call my answer C. What is the dimension of my answer going to be then? It's going to be a 2 by 5. Right? You guys remember that? Mm -hmm. If I switch the order and I try to do B times A, can I do that? No, why not? Yeah. So notice that they're the columns of A in the row, or the columns of the first matrix and the rows of the second matrix are not the same. Right? So if I wanted to multiply two matrices together, say here. The first thing I should do is check to make sure this multiplication is possible. What do I have to do to check that? I have to look at the dimensions, right? What's the dimension of this first matrix? That's a 2 by 3. It has two rows and three columns. And the second one is a 3 by 3. So what is going to be the size of my answer then? It's a 2 by 3. So I'm going to go ahead and write out the form of my answer. So there's my 2 by 3 matrix. I put a spot for the two rows and the three columns there, right? So the first entry we call 1, 1, the second entry 1, 2, then 1, 3, 2, 1, 2, 2, 2, 3, right? How do I get the first entry in this matrix? I multiply the first row to the first column. So I'm going to have 1 times 1 plus 0 times negative 1 plus 3 times 0. And then I'll do the first row times the second column. So 1 times 2 plus 0 times 0 plus 3 times 3. And then the first row times the fourth or the third column, so 1 times 4, 0 times 0, and then 3 times 1. Then I'll move on and I'll do the first row, or the second row times the first column. So negative 2 times 1, 1 times negative 1, 4 times 0. And then I'm going to have negative 2 times 2 plus 1 times 0, plus 4 times 3, and then negative 2 times 4, 1 times 0, 
plus 4 times 1. So if I add these up, I get 1, I get 11, I get 7, I get negative 3, I get 8, and I get negative 4. Everybody you kind of remember doing this last time? Okay. So the last thing that we were talking about um, was do matrix or do matrices commute with matrix multiplication? Is A times B equal to B times A? Does anybody remember the result here? Yeah, it's in general it's no, right? We saw in our first example, if I take just two generic matrices, here we get a 2 by 5, but if I flip, that's undefined. So clearly just in general they're not going to be equal, right? Yeah, if we restrict them to both being square matrices, right, We at least the dimension part works out. So unless I have two square matrices, oops, uh, the dimension is going to be a problem. If I have both of the matrices square, at least the dimension is going to work out so they could possibly um, commute. But I think we looked at an example and saw that just if you pick any two random square matrices and multiply them together, it didn't work still, right? So the question that we were left with, are there any square matrices? that commute. And I think we said I was going to leave, let you guys think about that over the weekend. Did anybody come up with any, uh, any answers to this? There's two situations that I've expected you guys to come up with. So the answer here is yes, there are some. And I'm looking for two in particular from you guys. There's more than two situations, but two that I would expect you guys to be able to come up with. They're all ones. What do you mean by that? Which matrix? Okay, so you're saying if I just do A times A, that should equal also A times A. Sure, that's true. So if A and B are just the same matrix, then sure. doesn't matter what the entries are. If you have two identical square matrices, then sure, of course, that's going to commute. That's one of the two situations I would have expected you guys to come up with. Ah, so if I have, if one of them is the zero matrix, that'll also work, right? If I have a square matrix with just zeros in it, you're just going to, either way, this is just going to give you the zero matrix, right? So those are the two that I would have expected you guys to come up with. 
there's two more that we're going to kind of investigate today. But we're going to come back to those because they're not super obvious and we'll kind of discover them along the way. Okay? So my next question here, we've talked, we've beaten this uh, commutative question fairly well into the ground, right? Okay. My next question would be, um, So what is the multiplicative identity for matrix multiplication? And when we say multiplicative identity, I'm looking for a matrix that when I multiply it by A, I get A. And really that should work in both directions. So what can we say about this matrix question mark? It's also a square matrix, right? In fact, it has to have the same dimension as A, but sure, got to be a square matrix. What do you think the entries in that matrix would look like? So you think they're all ones? Is that what you're saying? Right. So A is a matrix. So let's, what are you saying question marks entries look like though? You're saying those are all ones? Well, let's see what happens if we try it. This would be the natural guess, I think, for most of us. So if I do row 1 times column 1, I'd have 2 times 1 plus 3 times 1, right? Now that's not going to give me 2. What part of this is the problem, though? No, well, that's part. That's the, how you do matrix multiplication. You can't change the addition. We can only change the question mark. That's what we don't know. What does this first entry need to be? What do we need it to do? It needs to be two, right? What can we change? The things in question mark, because we don't know what question mark is. So what should we change in question mark to make that first entry turn out to be a 2? What if we change that 1 to a 0? Does that give me 2 now for the first entry? Okay. All right, let's keep going then. So I'm going to then do the first row in the second column. Is that worked out correctly? No, that's giving me five. What does it need to give me? Three. What number do I need to change? So this one needs to be a zero, right? Okay. So now let's finish this up. So I'm going to have 5 times 1 plus negative 1 times 0. And then 5 times 0 plus negative 1 times 1. And when I do that, what do I end up getting here? Is that what I need it to do? Yeah, right? So we can say that 
the multiplicative identity for the two by two matrix is that matrix. Well, what do you think it is for a one by one matrix? It should be really obvious. I just a little less obvious. What's it going to be for a three by three? What's the first row going to look like? One, and then, and then, what's the next row going to look like? And the third row, what's it going to look like? Do we see the pattern yet as to what's going on? Notice that what we're really getting here is ones down the main diagonal and zeros everywhere else. So what's the four by four gonna look like? Everybody feel good about this? Okay. So we're going to give this matrix a special name. Guess which letter we're going to use to represent this matrix? Why do you think we chose the letter I? Because it looks like the number one, and it's acting, the multiplicative identity acts just like the number one does when we multiply real numbers, right? So if we go back then to our list here. I can add in that as a place that commutes. Do we need to turn the lights off in here? Can you guys see? Then stand up and turn off the lights, man. That's how it goes. Anytime you can't see, if the lights are on, turn them off. It's no big deal. We were just taking a test, I think, in the last class. so. I had them on so people could see their papers. Good to good to update. Good update. All right. My next question is what do the multiplicative inverses look like for matrix multiplication? When we say multiplicative inverses, I'm looking for a matrix that I can multiply to A that gives me the identity. And really that multiplication needs to look, work in both directions. So what can we say about this matrix question mark here? What's it got to look like? It's got to be a square matrix. That 
that much we know. What do the entries inside that matrix have to look like? It's not going to be all ones. Let's look at an example real quick of a case where this works. Um, so I claim that this is a, and this is question mark, and I'm going to get I back from this. Let's check real quick. So row times column. 2 times, or 3 times 2 is 6, 5 times negative 1 is negative 5, 6 minus 5 is 1. Three times negative 5 is negative 15, 5 times 3 is positive 15, negative 15 plus positive 15 is 0. One times two is two. Two times negative one is negative two. Two plus negative two is zero. And lastly, one times negative five is negative five. Two times three is six. Negative five plus six is one. So we know that these things exist, right? I've just shown you that they exist. So there has to be some way to find them. Um, so let's say that we hadn't known what this inverse was going to look like. I'm just going to put in generic values here. I want to figure out what those values for A, B, C, and D were, well, I can do my matrix multiplication here. So I get 3A plus 5C, and then similarly 3B plus 5D, and then I get 1A plus 2C, and then 1B plus 2D, and that would have to equal there. So what this is going to turn into is some systems of equations. So if I take the, the first column, notice those are both in terms of A's and C's. And if I take the second column, those are both in terms of B's and D's. And I could solve this using the techniques that we had developed early on in this chapter, right? You could use substitution or elimination to solve these two little systems. And if you do that, you're going to get that A is 2 and C is negative 1. Here you get that B is 5, or I'm sorry, is 1. Nope. One more time. B is negative 5, and D is uh, 3. Just using substitution or elimination or one of those earlier methods. But that stinks, right? I don't want to turn every one of these into like a solving a system problem. Even though that really kind of works, um, it's not a great method. But I didn't show this to you because we we're going to use this as, uh, I didn't show this to you because we we're going to use solving a system as a method. I just showed this to you for another reason. When you solve a system of equations, are you always do you always get an answer? No, right? What can happen here? 
you get no solution or infinitely many solutions, right? Does that mean if no solution is a possibility, what does that tell you about these multiplicative inverses? They might not exist, right? So not every matrix, not every square matrix is going to have a multiplicative inverse. So we know that since finding or since uh, finding this multiplicative inverse is really equivalent to solving a system, and not all of these systems have solutions. We know that not all of these matrices are going to have a multiplicative inverse, right? Hmm. And we know as I just said earlier that the way we're actually going to find these multiplicative inverses is not going to be as bad as having to solve a system every time we want to avoid having to do that because that tends to be kind of a lot of work. There must be some kind of shortcut to this because Mr. Kulik earlier just wrote down a matrix and its inverse right off the top of his head without really doing anything. It's unlikely that he solved that system in his head real quick. There must be some other shorter kind of shortcut trick to doing that. And there is, and that's what we're going to kind of look at here. But to do that, we have to define a new operation. So we're going to take a little bit of a detour here because we have to do a little bit more in order to finish up talking about how we find these inverses. So we're going to define a new matrix operation called the determinant. The determinant is defined only for square matrices. And to compute the determinant, what we're going to do is for a two by two case, if I want to take the determinant of a two by two, I just do A times B and I minus B times C. That's it. For a three by three, if I want to take the determinant of oh boy, I put D twice there. The alphabet's hard, guys.
to compute the determinant for a 3x3 three three is a bit more work than just multiplying the diagonals and subtracting them. So again, what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to describe to you how you, do, how you can find this determinant. I don't want to just turn this into a formula because the formula is pretty horrific. What I want to do is just show you how I get the formula because that's much easier to remember than the formula itself. So this method I'm about to show you is called the diagonals method. And it's going to start by just recopying the first two columns on the right side of my matrix. And then I'm going to multiply the three downward full diagonals And then I'm going to subtract the three upward diagonals. So that's my formula. Now which one is going to be easier to remember? that formula or the process I use to generate that formula? Dude, the process, right? Like drawing those diagonals, it's really easy to remember kind of how to do that together. If you ask me to memorize that thing, to remember which letters go with which other letters and the triple, oh my god, that's an alphabet soup of confusion right there. But the diagonals, like that's visual, I can remember that, that's pretty easy to do. So let's do some examples. So as an additional piece of notation here, we can write the symbol for determinant by writing DET and then writing the matrix. But probably even more common is that we'll just use the straight vertical bars instead of brackets around my matrix to indicate we're going to take the determinant. So here, these straight vertical bars do not mean the absolute value. We're borrowing that same notation. Here it means that we're taking the determinant. So in the vertical bars around a matrix, we know that means the determinant. In the vertical bars around a number, that means absolute value. Okay, so what do I have to do to take this determinant? Well, I'm going to do 3 times 1. And then subtract negative 2 times 4. So I get 11 as my answer. Everybody okay with how I did that? The 2 by 2 determinant should be really easy, right? You just multiply two things and then subtract them. That's a piece of cake. Let's 
say I want to take this determinant. This is a three by three matrix that we're taking the determinant of, so the process is a little bit different. It begins by recopying the first two columns on the right side. Everybody see that that's just the first two columns recopied again? Now I'm going to multiply the three downward diagonals. And add those together. And then I'm going to multiply the three upward diagonals and subtract those. So when I do that, I get 9 minus 5 plus 0. Minus zero, minus zero, minus zero. So the answer to that is four. Okay. Does everybody feel okay about what we mean by a determinant? It's just another matrix operation, right? Okay. So, let's return back to these multiplicative inverses. The only kind that I'm going to expect you to be able to calculate are the 2 by 2s. If the my matrix A is the matrix A, B, C, D. Yes, Dan? Sure. My multiplicative inverse, which I'm going to write this way with a negative 1 exponent, this is just means multiplicative inverse. It's going to be 1 over the determinant of times the matrix D negative B negative C A. So let's look at a quick numeric example. So here's my matrix A. A inverse is going to be 
Well, it's going to be 1 over the determinant of 3, 5, negative 1, 2, times the matrix 2, negative 5, positive 1, 3. Right. Notice that I switched the locations for A and D, and that I made the negation of uh, B and C. Right? Okay. Well, I know how to take the determinant. I just multiply my two diagonals and subtract them, right? That's going to be 6 minus a negative 5. Six minus a negative five is the same thing as six plus five, which is eleven. And one over eleven times the matrix is just scalar multiplication, right? So when I do that, I get two over eleven, negative five over eleven. 1 over 11, and 3 over 11. That is my matrix A inverse. Yes? Maybe? Excuse me. So, two useful properties the determinant of A times B is equal to what do you guys think? It's nice, it's just equal to the determinant of A times the determinant of B. That's rather surprising, but that is true. The multiplicative inverse of A times B, this is probably the most surprising of all, Guess what this is equal to? That's equal to B inverse times A. Is that the same thing as A inverse times B? No! Why not? Why not? Cole, stop sleeping. Well, you were close enough. Grace. No. Nicholas. So I, my question was, is this then the same as this? It is not. Why not? Because matrix multiplication is not commutative, right? 
So this is definitely different. Let's prove this just to convince you why the order changes there. Sound good? So I know by the definition of a multiplicative inverse, that this is true, right? Everybody agree with that? That if I take something and multiply by its multiplicative, multiplicative inverse, I have to get the multiplicative identity, right? That's just what it means to be multiplicative inverses? Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to get the a times b to the negative 1 by itself. Okay, so to do that, I'm going to multiply on both sides by a inverse. Notice here the place where I wrote the A inverse is important. This part right here, is this the same as I times A inverse? What do we think? That is true. Why is that true? We go back and we look at our list of times that commutivity works. When you're multiplying by the identity, that's one of those times that commutivity works, right? Okay. So I am going to use the associative property to regroup this this way. And what does a inverse times a give me? By definition, that is the identity and what is a inverse times i give me? By the definition of i, that's just a inverse. Similarly speaking over here, if I do i times b, that just gives me b. So I'm now I'm down to this. So what I'm going to do next is I'm going to get rid of that b. To get rid of that b, I'm going to multiply on the left to both sides by b inverse. Here, on this step, did it matter if I wrote this as b inverse times a or a inverse times b? Did that matter? Yes! 
because this is not a situation where these two are going to be commutative. So it definitely matters which side that B inverse you put it on because we put the B inverse over here is on the left. The B inverse on this side must be on the left. It's not okay to have written it in the other order. Okay. B times B inverse just gives me I. That's the definition of multiplicative inverses. And I times AB inverse is just AB inverse. That's the definition of the identity. And there's my final answer. So you see that that did indeed swap. Shocking a little bit that that's true. We're going to stop here.